The period between the two world wars, 1918-1939, saw great changes in the world of fashion. Both men's and women's fashion reflected as great changes took place in the society and in the outlook of the time. The leveling of the classes, the decrease in formality, and for women, the move towards emancipation. In 1918, women over the age of 30 were given the right to vote, and this was extended to 1928 to all women. In 1919, the aviators John Alcock and Arthur Brown made the first non-stop flight across the Atlantic. What is more, in 1922, the radio channel BBC began a mass communication that would be a dominant engine for social change. The technological development of new fabrics and new means of fastening clothes affected fashion during the world interior period. Natural fabrics such as cotton and wool were most accessible fabrics of the decade. Silk was highly desired for luxurious fashion, but the limited supply made it expensive. The first example of women's wear during interwar period is depicted by Mark Gertler on a painting of Natalie Vivan from 1928. She was a muse to many leading British artists. She's wearing an evening dress made of silk. The flower on the left side of the gown indicates that it is a dancing dress. Women dressing in the colorful fabrics echo the joy of the war that have just ended. The dress is green, possibly backless or ending at the level of the waist, and it's supported by shoulder straps. Very low decolletage at the back was very fashionable. Natalie is covering her back from the cold with her fur coat, which was extremely popular at the time and was an indication of wealth. In this case, this is true as she married a very successful painter, Bobby Bivan. Mary Philbin steps out into her garden to show us a correct afternoon frock. This model is an adaption of Chanel and features the new length, the molded hip line, and the high waist. It is fashioned of an imported net, printed in a dainty green and white design. A two-tone grosgrain ribbon is used to trim, and a soft cape collar enhances the shoulder line. Another example of women's wear at the time is presented in 1939 by Gerald Leslie Blockhurst on a painting of Duchess of Windsor. She's wearing a house gown which was a variation of a tea gown. This kind of dress was worn in the mornings and evenings for relaxation. In the late 1930s, tight-fitting clothes were popular again and the waistline slightly raised. Dress has wide accentuated shoulders and short sleeves are puffed. It is also buttoned at the front and possibly has a long skirt. When it came to men, one of the very important factors influencing fashion was the development of airplanes. Two paintings from the interwar period depict men's aviation's fashion in two different years. First, Sir John William Alcock, portrayed by Ambrose McEvoy in 1921. During World War I, he joined Royal Navy and later Royal Air Force, also piloted the first non-stop transatlantic flight. He's wearing a one-piece jumpsuit made out of thick navy blue material. The costume is fastened with one button on the left shoulder and tightened with a belt on the waist. His head is covered with a brown baklava, which at the time was designed to expose only one part of the face, which was a plain knitted helmet. He also has a light brown gloves with a long fur ending. Gloves were always worn for town wear, especially during early 1920s. They could be fastened with one button at the wrist. The second member of the Royal Flying Corps in World War I was Sir Alan Cobham, depicted by Frank Salisbury in 1926. 
He's wearing a brown leather jacket, possibly with matching trousers. The leather is of high quality as it looks very soft and has a bit of shine. The top can be fastened with buttons and the jacket has a high collar which protects the pilot from the wind. The uniform looks comfortable as it is not too tight fitting. As an accessory, Alan is wearing a signet ring which was very fashionable at the time. Rings were made mainly in gold with semi-precious stone. Where'd you get those ears? What a dressy boy he's sunning. How'd he ever get so cunning? No chance for you. Why not? I'm not the worst. I'll drive my love. Come back, I saw him first. Where'd he get those nose? Where'd he get that fall? Here he comes, I'll bet he trips up. Who the dick and rouge these lips up? In 1930s, the athletic body became the ideal men's shape. Clothing reflected this new shape with extra broad shoulders, thin waist and tapered legs. A great example of a fashionable man during the interwar period was British economist John Maynard Case, depicted with his wife Lydia Lopokova in 1932 by William Roberts. John is wearing a brown overcoat lined with shoulder pads. The coat angles down to the waist, creating a V-shape from neck to waist. It is designed to make the economist appear larger and more masculine. Underneath the coat, he is dressed with a white shirt with a button collar, blue tie and a brown waistcoat, possibly a three-piece suit. Colors of his clothes indicate that he is dressed for the afternoon.